Oops. Hi there. We have a special um, video today, live video today. We blanked out for a second. <laughs> we have a special pillow, too. We have a special pillow. <laughs> We've been preparing for you and cracking ourselves up, so I hope you can laugh with us. But today we're going to talk about 2020. Ah! <laughs> and uh, today we're going to talk about goals for 2020. And I'm here with my darling friend, an amazing psychologist who's going to guide us through some great work. And we're just going to have a conversation. And I'd love for you to join in if you have any feedback or questions that want to help. But we're going to have a conversation about how to make 2020 an amazing year for you. And did you know, I heard this amazing statistic. Did you know that 95% of the people that make goals in the new year, they, they're, they're done with their goals 15 days into it? Oh, I believe that. Isn't yeah. that amazing? 15 yeah. days. It's hard. So that's why we're coming on now. What is the date today? I'm like so in the moment, I don't even know the date. It's um, <laughs> 23 days, so we can get you back on track and help you. And then if you haven't already made your goals, we're going to help you. So, all right, without further ado, uh, Sarah, can you start with uh, how we should proceed with this? Let's sure, go. sure. You know what? I'm a big goal setter. I love setting goals. It's harder to keep them and follow through with them, but... Um, I, I used to be in sales and I learned about positive thinking and goal setting and sales and setting sales goals and just how I can apply it to my life and help other people apply it to their lives. So goals are really, really important. They're like our map in life. And I heard once that those oh that, that don't have goals are destined to fulfill the goals of other people. Oh. And, uh, Somebody that doesn't have goals and, and a vision for their life is like a little ship that's just kind of tossed amongst the waves um, and just kind of goes in whatever direction really other people are kind of leading them towards. So um, it's really, really important to think about what you want in life and then um, figure out what your action steps are to get there. Um, so that goals. Um so 2020, oh, here we go. Yes, here we go with our glasses. Ah. So 2020 <laughs> is about, this year is about clarity of vision. Mm. 2020, um, it's a very, it's also about balance. Um, and so um, the thing of it is, we're talking about fertility and what I experienced, I went through infertility myself and also, I, it's my specialty, of course, that's how I met Denise, and we work together to help uh, ladies build their family. And one of the things I, that I noticed for me personally, and also talking with the women that I've talked to, is we can get really out of balance and think about how <clears throat> um, very focused on fertility. It's very all-consuming, yeah. spiritually, financially, emotionally. Uh, psychologically so it's important to have fertility goals of, of what you're going to do and how you plan to do it um, but also to have other goals in other aspects of your life um, so that you can create and experience that balance and doing things that give you pleasure and feeling a progression in those other areas too. Cause that's another thing about infertility is we can feel very stuck yeah. developmentally. Uh, everyone else is going on having baby number one, baby number two, very, baby number three, and we aren't doing that and it can be very isolating. So um, I like having goals, thinking about goals in a, uh, various aspects of life. So um, goals as a couple, goals, spiritual goals, um, work goals, because most of the ladies I talk to uh, are, they have a career or they're employed. Um, sometimes people are thinking about switching jobs. Sometimes people uh, are thinking about leaving jobs uh, and having that more time and space to do the fertility treatment. Um, but so goals in the career mode, uh, family goals, um, spiritual goals, uh, goals as far as our physical environment, um, our house, 
uh, cooking health goals, fitness goals. So sometimes it's nice to lay those out in different categories and write those down for the year. And then even um, maybe sometimes people, what people do is break them down for the quarter. So I like to do that. You know, you uh -uh. figure out what works for you. It's not about getting overwhelmed. Um, and even just writing them down plants a seed. Mm -hmm. So I love this concept from uh, Shakti Gowan. She wrote a book called Creative Visualizations. And she talked about having the thought is the seed. And so, so sometimes even that is enough. But we plant seeds and um, watering them and tending to them usually help them grow. Uh, so those are my thoughts about um, goals. And um, Denise, you had brought up something about reviewing the year. So I yeah. think that's important too. Do you want to talk about sure, that? Sure, sure. So, but <laughs> first of all, my, I think that's sure. it's really beautiful put with the analogy of, of the seed because uh, it's so true, and I think it's in line with like whatever you focus on will create. So even if you set the intention, you start to lead towards that way, little by little, making little steps for that. It's very, I think it's very powerful, very powerful. So um, I was sharing with Sarah earlier um, one of the things that I do every year with my family and my team um, is I like to reflect on the year. On the past year and learn from it and learn so I can grow. So I look at my wins and my successes and then I also look at what didn't work and what pains did I have that I really just kind of want to learn from and then leave behind so that I can start fresh and in, in this next year. So those are some things that I really like to do. Some wins to celebrate because I find that uh, it's really important to look back from where you've been so you can really see how far you've come. And I see that a lot of times we get caught up in the minutia of everything and we're always looking for the horizon. We're always looking for the next thing and trying to be, you know, up here or this, this being we have in our mind we're supposed to be, but really, it's really a never ending journey to get there. And we need to look back on progress. So I think focusing on progress is, is really important. Yes, I think that's a really good point because I noticed that um, the ladies uh, that I work with, um, they are very focused on what's the next indicated action or feeling stuck. And I sit there and I just feel so honored to know them and hear their story and see how much they, how far they've come, how much they progressed. And, um, and so I think having that personal reflection is important because we can get so swept up into the next thing. Uh, and it's amazing how much we, we have accomplished usually when we do this, it's kind of like writing a resume, you know, I don't know if you've ever had this experience or a CV and it's like, wow, I I've really done a lot. I'm really good because <laughs> we forget we're, we're in the process. Right. And so that reflection is so, so important, Denise. Um, you're also reminding me of a wonderful New Year's ritual that I like to do uh, for myself and, and for my clients. And that is, um, it's letting go of what uh, we want to leave in the past year. So for this year, it was letting go of um, the people, places and things, the thoughts, um, the situations that we want to let go of and leave in 2019. And so there's a lot of different ways of doing that. Um, what I like to do is I, I like rocks and stones. And so I, I like to get hematite, which absorbs negative energy. And then that's a stone that you, you visualize those things you want to let go of. And then you do let go of it in nature. And then, um, what, but you can also write all of this down. Uh, and then, um, the next step after you create space is then um, I like to use a rose quartz stone, which is a fertility mm. stone, by the way, and hold it in your palm and visualize the people, places and things that you want more of, um, what you want to bring into your life for 2020. And again, you can alter this by writing those things down. Uh, and then you hold that touchstone or you can put the writing in a place where you have access to it. So it just reminds you of those of those kind of things in your mind's eye. That's beautiful. I love that. Yeah. 
and it's really because you, ha you have something tangible something physical to just kind of remember and grab onto and then that in that um ritual of letting go and throwing it away it's 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 very powerful to, to do that yeah yeah it is it is a great ritual i've had some people that didn't want to let go of the, the negative stone <laughs> Right? What about, so that's that's like oh that's interesting you know but there was probably some benefit they were getting from that negative thought right because there's always so it's really so that's really interesting yeah it's kind of diagnostic of oh you have a hard time letting go of things uh -huh. um, so yeah so that's that's that piece in it very interesting yeah. do you have any rituals yourself that you do for like a, more any morning routines that you do to help get you to your goals. Oh, well, that's a great question. I love that. So um, I like to, ideally, I like, and it's hard to get back on track. I have to say this January, it's been hard. I took a break uh, from work and it, I felt like when I came back in January, I went from zero to 200. But what I'm trying to get back to is I like to write in the morning. Oh, I like to start the morning off writing. Um, I like to do what's called morning pages mm -hmm. uh, from uh, the Julia Cameron's work, The Artist's Way. And so that really helps me have clarity. I write whatever's on my mind, three pages uh, is what they recommend. And sometimes it's a list of to-do to lists. It's my feelings, what's going on in my life. It's a great kind of a check-in first thing in the morning, and then I can move forward in my day. I also like to swim. Oh, you do. I like to swim. That's my exercise. And I just read something on Facebook, which is one of my favorite sources, <laughs> about if you are sensitive or you're empath, that it's really important for empaths to be in water. Oh. And because it's very cleansing. Yes, um, And purifying. Uh -huh. And, um, and so I'm like, oh, well, that's why I like to swim. Uh, and it also, you can take a shower. I mean, most people, that's a morning ritual. They get up, they take a shower. Uh, sometimes people do it at night. But again, that's water. Right. Getting in water. Sometimes jacuzzi, uh, you know, at night to kind of wind down. So, all right. So you asked me about rituals. Did you say morning rituals or did you just say rituals period? Well, rituals period yeah. to help you, help you get to where you want to be for this yeah. next quarter next year yeah so Our goals yeah i think it's just creating that structure like mm -hmm. uh you know what like with exercise now that's a big one especially you know, i don't know about you but <laughs> i'm like noticing i had this break and i i took you know i have this like extra like oh where did that come from around my midsection well it came from all that delicious food um so what I found for me is to create space in my schedule and I, I have appointments. And so it's like, yes, this is very important. And this is an appointment with me. And okay. so blocking in my calendar, right. exercise Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, blocking that time. Perfect. Out. Yeah. So, so that's helpful. So important to calendar it. I always say yeah. if it's not on the calendar, it's not going to happen. We have to calendar our self care too. Absolutely. And it's important. Before in the past, I like, I wouldn't put it in the calendar, then I put it in the calendar. And then I would just like, oh, like, okay, I've got some wiggle room. And I'll just I won't exercise on that day. And so then that's you're throwing yourself under the bus. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes, you are. Yeah, I had a challenge this morning, I woke up, I don't know if you ever do this or not. I'm, I'm assuming that we all do this. But I, I woke up and it was so cold and I had my my tea. And I didn't want to leave the house. And it was like Thursday's my day morning to exercise. You know, I wake up every uh, early so I can go exercise. And I literally wasted 15 minutes struggling with myself. Do you, you need to go. You won't go later. Oh, I can go later. Oh, no, you're so cozy now. Oh, no, you need to go. <laughs> I was. So but I was able to, to manage that. So I started overthinking it. I find that sometimes when you're doing some of those things that you don't necessarily want to do, but you know that will take you there to keep you in your in alignment with your goals. Uh, you just you just got to do it and not think about it. Yeah. And, you know, um, you're reminding me of a couple of things. One is that I'm, I'm trying to get have the discipline to do the exercise. And I did go Monday um, swimming with my daughter. It was so wonderful. And I felt so good afterwards. Right. And I was had a conversation with myself like, 
why don't you keep doing this? You feel so good. It just made the whole day wonderful. Yes. So, um, you know, these are the things that help us stay on track. You right. Know? Uh, Staying in touch with how you're going to feel, what your alignment is at the end and not necessarily at the beginning. Right. Yeah. And working yeah. that self-care in. Um, and it's simple things. You know, it's simple things uh, like uh, having your favorite tea and in, in, in a coffee cup. Mm -hmm. When I did the rituals. Do, yeah. When I'm doing my writing in the morning, I used to go out on the patio table when it was warm and listen to the birds and write there. Uh, and now it's so cold. But what I've been doing is I turn on my fireplace. Oh, that's nice. And I and sit cozy. by the fire and I'm like, gosh, why didn't I do this before? It's like, oh, you know, oh, fireplace only for company. No, yeah. no, I'm important too. Yeah. And it's just something that, that is soothing and gives me pleasure. Yeah. And when we're going through infertility, we need to really do those things that fill up our well because it's so depleting. It's so depleting, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very good. Should I talk about vision boards or did you? Yeah, want to why don't you? So I am, another thing I learned about was vision boards. And I love vision boards because they're, they're a little bit different than goals. They're, they're bigger, they're visual, um, they're global. And so I like to do a vision board every year. And sometimes, some years I've altered a board I've done before. Um, but when I was going through my treatment cycle, I did a fertility, it was specific to fertility. And um, it was just so powerful. I had um, I had like healthy fertility foods on the board and exercise and my support group was on there. Resolve was on there. Um, you know, acupuncture, because I was doing acupuncture and I believe in that. And then I had a picture of Christy Brinkley yeah, I think she was pregnant with Sailor at the time. And I put my a picture of my face on her pregnant body. Oh. And it was kind of scary to do it. It's like, oh, you know, I don't know. But it worked. It worked. It was so, and, and she looked really good, too. <laughs> yeah, I bet she did. She's amazing. And, and so um, it was just a great visual that I had amongst the other visuals as far as, um, how I wanted my life to be, how to manifest it. Um, and again, with the vision board, oh, I love you in these glasses. <laughs> why not? Um, you know, it's um, all areas of your life. So you get to dream. You get to, um, so let me, oh, I've got to take these off. Um, so a vision board, what you do is you take a, a piece of, a, a, you can be different sizes, but some sort of, piece of paper and then you go through magazines and you pull out images that represent what you want to have in your life so sometimes you have ideas of things that you definitely want like for me i wanted my sports car and i this was my dream car and so what i did is i did google image i i googled it i i printed out the image and i pasted it on the board and i got the car you know and i was able to take it off because that vision was accomplished. So you can do those kind of things that are very specific. Yeah. And then also too, I think it's good to have that dreaming time, that kind of looking through Oprah's one of my favorite magazines to look I through. Love and Oprah. Yeah. And, and love her. yoga magazines and health and shape and fit and, and looking through at those images of what you aspire to. So that's what I'll say about vision. Nice. And, and then post it in a place where you can see it. Maybe take a picture of it, have it on your phone. You want it to be private because you don't necessarily want people going, what's that? You know, oh, why do you have that? Um, it's for you. But it's a reminder to stay focused on. Yeah. Keep your eye on the prize. Keeping your eye on the prize. So what you focus on is what you're going to see, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. So that's great. That's a great exercise. I love doing the vision boards. It's so powerful. Again, it's one of those things about setting your intention. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting to do it with your spouse. I'm just thinking that my husband did one and I did one. And it was interesting to see what his looked like. You know, there were things that were overlapping that we both had on our boards. And then he had certain things that were specific to him. Yeah. So, yeah. so I would make a suggestion while you're making goals. Tell me if you agree or want um, to, like, would you, I always like to do like a, 
a five-year goal, a one-year goal, but then breaking it down even more. And I find myself, so something for me this year is, like, I feel like, for example, I should be at the top of the staircase. Like, I want to skip, somehow I want to <laughs> jump from the bottom to the top of the staircase and, like, skip all the stuff in between, right? So I find that becomes overwhelming and, um, and, and stressful. So I've been able to, for me this year, is prioritizing mm. and really figuring out what I want to do and what I can really manage on my plate. And so I'm breaking it down into quarters, oh, nice. like the, you actually mentioned that earlier and then seeing like, what are my top three things that are going to move the needle the most for me this year and this quarter. And then once I attain that, then I can make the next step and just kind of break it down. So I'm trying that this year. That sounds excellent, Denise. That's really specific. It sounds like you have, you've, you're really thinking about what are the priorities and what are the actionable steps. And sometimes yeah. those steps are step one, step two, step three, do this first and then move on to this and then right. move on to this. So I think that's really very specific yeah. and, and that's really helpful with goals. Um, I think, you know, don't let it stop you folks. Uh, if that begin where you are, yeah. Denise is an advanced goal setter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that and, advanced? <laughs> and, but so it's okay to begin where you are. Come enter into this, just like Shakti says, you know, it starts with a seed. Yeah. Um, I love that. Yeah. I, we use yeah. that a lot in fertility when yeah. we're preparing the body it's to get medicine. the soil ready. Yes. Yeah. I <laughs> and so it's, and sometimes the seed just kind of blows out and it kind of blows in the wind, but if you plan it specifically, and that goes with fertility too. We yeah. Know. Um, and so, but begin where you are, begin where it feels comfortable, where you can enter in and be gentle and kind with yourself because the goals and the vision boards aren't, aren't designed to be, oneself up right so important you know? because sometimes like when I've done vision boards I'm like oh I, I you know I don't want that anymore sometimes it's it's really like this process of putting it out there and sometimes it's like well no that's not what I really want mm -hmm. you know the goals can switch switch and change that's why it's good to you know take a look at them too um, so just be really good and gentle with yourself begin where you are uh, and then nurture and direct the seed as much as you're willing and able to. Beautiful. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So how would you um, suggest somebody, you know, because I believe that you want to set yourself up to win, but at the same time, you also want to stretch yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how would you suggest you can do that without failing? Because you don't want to, and knowing where where you can stretch, do you know, do you know what I mean? I totally. I'm laughing. I'm smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smiling. Um, you know, there's such value in in uh, in years of experience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that I've learned, I am a very impatient person. I, you probably know this about me already. <laughs> I like things and I like them yesterday, mm -hmm. you know, and I like things I have like a fast pace, you know, like my French teacher used to say, beat, beat, beat. Um, and so things, but what I've learned is that things usually will take longer than I want or think they will. Yes. So that's why like when I've done the vision boards uh, before, we've said, you know, 2020 and beyond. Oh, because okay. sometimes we plant a seed and, and, and it's not, life's not linear usually, especially with infertility. Are you kidding me? And so um, sometimes I've had things on my vision boards for that year and it didn't come to fruition until five years later, Interesting. 10 years later, you know? Um, so, I mean, certain things have a timeline, uh, but I think that that's important to know. Um, that it's just plant the seed and it may take longer than you think it's have faith too. I think faith is really important. Faith is really uh, important to, to just breathe and, um, you know, breathe and pray if you pray and just, this is what I'd like or, or whatever else you have in mind for me, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that's what I'll say about that. I know. I love that because what I made that mean was that, it's okay to push yourself and maybe you didn't attain it 
in this specific amount of time, but that doesn't mean you're not going to attain it. Exactly. And there's just sometimes things don't happen exactly the way we plan. Yeah, yeah right? you know, life's what happens when we're making other plants. And right. infertility. Yeah, I love I that. Mean, this, this is, uh, you know, the other one is man plans, God laughs. Right. <laughs> And with fertility, it is so nonlinear for, I think, 99% of us mm -hmm. that it always is taking longer and we did this, but now we need to do that. Or we thought we were going to be having a transfer on this date, but um, now that's not going to work out. So we need to move it to next month or mm -hmm. it's, it, it's so circuitous. And so um, we go off on these paths that we, we didn't ever imagine we were going to go off on. Right. You know, so it's just having a understanding and awareness and an acceptance of that. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, that helped me. Awesome. No. <laughs> Is there anything else we should share about goal setting that we to help them while they're doing their goal setting, their rituals? Um, breathing is always a good thing. <laughs> breathing is always, always a good thing. <laughs> And yeah, and I think I think you know really we hit the highlights. Okay, it's important. So so recap would be. You want to recap? You're good at recap. I'm good at recapping. Okay, I'll do my best here. All right. So um, really taking your your life and breaking it down into the different. Oh, that's fun. I want to put these on. Uh, break it down and putting it into the different. What would you call it? Factors of your life. So like family, health, money. Uh, your relationships, um, your spiritual, you know, what are you doing spiritually to nourish your spirit and uh, growth, always growing is really important. Is that all of them, right? Yeah. Um, making progress. And then um, Sarah did a, a beautiful ritual. I was talked about doing this ritual about reflecting on the past and taking a stone and thinking about the things of your of pain and things that didn't really work for you that you want to be different and just putting all that energy, that focus into the stone and then throwing it away into nature. And she said, hematite, hematite, hematite. Yeah. It, it absorbs negative energy. And then again, thinking about um, the beautiful things that you would you want. Is that would you say that um, for the next year? Like, what do you want to attain for? this year and putting all the those imageries and those thoughts into a rose quartz and rose quartz also very specific for fertility but it's a love stone too right mm -hmm. um, and putting it in there or or even journaling she mentioned so that you can um, have that to look at and reflect so it helps pull you forward into your into your goals into who you want to become for this next year which i love i love that i love that you're, um and then we talked about um what else did we talk about? The rituals. Rituals and the vision board. And, and the vision board. Yeah, and being gentle with yourself. Yeah. You, you know, can I can I go in here? Sure. Yeah. Yes, I'm I'm looking at um uh my back wall and in this printed piece is the prophet. Yes, yeah. yeah, speak oh. to us of children. And it's such a beautiful piece. And it really um it's it's so beautiful. And I guess it makes me think about too that sometimes we have a goal and we attain it in a different way than we thought we were going to. So that really um, is about in, infertility is sometimes, well, we think we're just going to have make love with our husband and have a baby, a lot of us early on. And then it turns into a medical uh, event, medical events and tests and so on. And sometimes for people, and so then, People go through IVF or the IUI or whatever, and that works. And then for some people, they can't use their own ovum or they they, are, they can't uh, use the sper sperm of their husband. Um, and so that's a loss and that's difficult. And then sometimes they move on to donor sperm and ovum or they move on to surrogacy. They can't carry or they move on to adoption. And so all this, it's this path, again, a circuitous route. But really, the eye on the prize, what I tell my clients is if you want to have a baby, you will have a baby. It may not happen the way that you thought it would. And, pro and you're here, so it probably isn't happening the way you thought it would. But if you want to have a baby, if you want to be a parent, you can. So it's like keep your eye on the bigger picture, too. That's oh, important. That's nice. Yeah. Keep your eye on the bigger picture. Yeah. Very nice. 
Thank you, Sarah. So here's to a great 2020 and may you have the best year ever yet. And yay. So thank you for joining us today and um, we will see you. Are we gonna do Valentine's Day? I would love that. <laughs> we will see you on Valentine's Day and we will um, share with you then. So make it a great year and here's to your health, happiness and fertility. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.